I also wanted to talk about um, a message that we got into the Our Game account about Limerick now versus Kilkenny, the 2006 to 2019. Yeah, no, it was just, it was a detailed, uh, a detailed breakdown sent through comparing basically uh, Limerick's run from 18 to now with Kilkenny's from 06 to 09, the team that they're compared most to. I just want to fly down through, there was a, just went through all the teams that Kilkenny beat during that time. So Kilkenny beat from 06 to 09, they beat Wexford four times, Clare once, Cork twice, Offaly twice, Westmead once, Dublin once, Tip once, Watford twice, Limerick once and Galway once. So, and then when you compare Limerick 18 to present, they have beaten, do, 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 they've beaten Carlo once, Cork five times, Waterford five times, Clare four times, Tip four times, Galway three times, and Kilkenny twice. Now, when you when you put it in the cold heart of day, Limerick's is definitely more impressive um, who they have beaten. The passages have been way more difficult. The championship is... Uh, we say elongated a good bit more than it would have been then. It's not, um, there's not a natural passage through. There's a lot of hardship to get to the knockout stages. Um, so I, I would, I would definitely take that point on board. Now I don't know. I still probably have to kill Kenny 06 to 09 team. Um, when I think of, maybe it's just what you grow up with as well. When I think of the best players that I, you know, that I even in 30 or 40 years, the best players that I think I've seen, a lot of them will be from that Kilkenny team. What, what you're not going to go with Kilkenny anyway because of the tip kind of bias, but what would be when you're well, you've got your Stockholm syndrome there, the awfully Stockholm syndrome for Kilkenny. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, obviously, yeah, of course. But uh, when you compare the two of them, do Limerick still have more to do to be on par with Kilkenny or potentially surpass them? And that yeah. includes over the coming weeks. No, and like, I want both counties to lose every match they play. Like, I mean, I'm able to recognize, you know, quality, but, you know, I don't really favor one county over the other. But I think Limerick have already done more than enough to, to match what that Limerick Kilkenny team did because of the quality teams they've been up against. Like, they've yeah. been unbelievable up against it all the time. And that's why I think it's more impressive than Kilkenny sauntering through an absolute wasteland of a Leinster than it was for years generally straight into a semi-final and then come and meet monster teams that have knocked the heads off each other thereafter and just peaking for basically two games a year. Like Limerick have had to peak for so many games in a season and they went through a few seasons there of absolutely mullering teams by all sorts of scorers. <laughs> yeah, and now, now they've had to do it like in incredibly tough circumstances. Teams have sort of cottoned on to them a little bit. They're starting to match them tactically, physically, whatever way you want to look at it. So I would say it's more impressive already whether they complete this four in a row or not. And of course, I've lost Bernie there at the crucial moment. I lost no, I'll have you back. No, um, I, I tell you what would be interesting is if we were to pick it, and we will, we'll pick a combined 15 at some stage of the Limerick 6 to 9 or Kilkenny 6 to 9 and the Limerick to now. And that would be interesting to see what the, what the balance is there. But on paper, when you look at who Limerick have beaten, um, even... They've played a fair whack of more games, actually. You'd have to say too. Um, their their list of you know teams that have that they've put to the sword is definitely more impressive. If you look at, it, you know, of the big three, they've beaten Cork five times, they've beaten Tipperary four times, they've beaten Kilkenny twice. Um, and if you take you know take out potential controversial line ball in nineteen, and we could be talking about them going for what six in a row just here realistically. Are you trying to subtract an All Ireland from Tipperary's record there? I've been doing that for the last four years, Shane. You know that. You, you know that. It's <laughs> like it's the classic Jose Mourinho in nineteen. The best team lost. <laughs> um, Colum Lyons Blindspot said, "Can you compare Limerick's five in a row to Cork's five in a row? Months are tough to compare teams, but Limerick system, fitness, athleticism, and game management would beat that Kilkenny." Well, I wasn't home. even born when that Cork when that Cork five in a row started. You were probably just about born, maybe. Um, and by the time Cork had it completed, I wasn't even I wasn't even born at that stage. So I'm going to find it hard to compare. In fairness, now. You were still a dirty look in your daddy's eye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you could take one fella from the Kilkenny team for Limerick, that would be Owen Larkin. If you could take one player. I, see, the thing you have to look at there is, what do Limerick actually need? And what did Kilkenny have? That's, like, there's no point, like, you could say you take Tommy Walsh, but why would you when you have Dermot Burns five? You know what I mean? 
Yeah. I think you'd take JJ, would you? Because you could play him full back, wing back, corner back. You know what I mean? Michael Fenley? Imagine, imagine you had Michael Fenley and Will O'Donoghue together in midfield. Does uh, Adrian McGrath be saying what about Donovan beside him? Yeah. Um, who would be the one player? Say that you look at you're putting Larkin into the team and who are you edging out, Morrissey or Hegarty? You know what I mean? I, I no, I think I think it's actually obvious enough. I think it's an inside man, and I think it's if you look at, I'd say it's probably someone like Eddie Brennan. Been honest with you, because if you look at what Limerick maybe don't have, it's probably someone like that. And who's more interchangeable? I don't think I don't think from five to twelve you'd change any of them. To be honest and with you. you. If you were to go back the other way, right, and you can say that the Kilkenny goalkeeper is regularly untested, but Nicky Quaid. Yeah, Nicky Quaid. Yeah, Jesus. Um, King Lynch. Instead of who? Henry at 11. I'm not saying drop Henry Shefton. No, but no, I'm just saying, like, I'm kind of thinking, what, what do you think that Kilkenny team was missing? They weren't missing much, but... Where would be a potential area of weakness or someone that could come in? Well, at times, whereas when they talk about like that, they had to Declan, know, Hannan, like... Declan, Declan Hannan, yeah, 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 yeah. And the other thing was that they had to draw, uh, put JJ back full back because of you know different reasons and injuries and stuff like that. That they wanted to keep him out wing back, so maybe Sean Finn to play full back or Dan Morrissey. I go, I go, Declan Hannan. Right, okay. Right, yeah, you're you're yeah. fairly great, on that. great question to be fair. Yeah, uh don't get don't forget Richie Hogan. He was great, yeah, like at the peak of his powers. Very, very hard to, to beat uh, Richie Hogan. Um Raymond Gilburn says two in a row or three in a row will become almost impossible in hurling in the future. Domination will be two or three years or three and five years. I don't no, I think they'll keep happening. Like why, keep why? Your, I'd be interested to hear why Raymond thinks that, to be honest with you. But like a, a lot of the time it's a case of can you get the right management team of group and group of players together uh, to kind of build a decent team. And a lot of counties struggle to do that because it's not like you can buy in players and just make things. Like, sometimes you're at the mercy of what you produce and the management team that you put together at a given time. So that generally happens where one county does and then other counties don't. So that's why you have these periods of dominance as well. One team tax get, gets ahead, the next team... They don't have like 20 people doing analysis and trying to figure out the mm. tactics of the opposition. And I think you will continue to have teams winning lots of titles. I think Cork would fancy, them, fancy their chances over the next 10 years of going on, a, mm. I would say, at different stages. Um, it's also very interesting. Thing. What's the next step for Limerick, would say, when Canark, when Canark steps aside, whenever that is? That's not to say John Kiley will step aside whenever Canark does, but... Like he's widely regarded as the mind, the mind behind Limerick. And Do you think that bothers Kylie? Here I, and I, I honestly don't. I, I honestly don't think so. Being honest with you, because I think if it did mind, if it did mind, like he regularly, um, he regularly deflects to Canark in particular, um, mm. and the players regularly deflect to him. I think, um, and I think that's one of the main reasons that Limerick have been so successful is most inter-county managers. Um, have a fair ego, I would say. You kind of have to nearly to, to throw yourself into that. Um, but I, th I think Kylie seems to have no problem to say Paul Canark is unbelievably good at doing this. I will let him do that. And I remember Don O'Grady saying one time, um, there was some training session going on down the Gaelic grounds, and there was some lads in watching the training, and they were looking back and they were like, well, "Who are these lads? What what are they doing here?" And he's like. You know, should they should they really be in here looking at a Limerick training session? And Kylie just turned around and said to O'Grady, "It's like this dodge, I'd say, referred to him as. We don't even know what's going on out there. How are they supposed to know? Do you know what I mean? Like that's the the level of Canark's kind of thinking. So I honestly don't think it. I honestly don't think it bothers Kylie. I actually think it's something he encourages and he just delegates X to Canark and Y and Z to everybody else, and he's happy for them to do their job." Yeah, well, it's generally the people that are more worried about their ego that are worried about other people getting credit. Yeah. Colin Ryan's blind spot says, were Limerick helped by the fact that two championships were played off in 18 months during COVID? Uh, if t if time t uh, ran as normal, would they have come into the pack a bit sooner? The one thing I'd say about that is after, you know, like teams have, when teams win, generally there's a bit of going out and celebrating and taking the cup around to everywhere in the county and all that kind of stuff. 
and you often see players going off the rails a little bit and it's very <laughs> difficult for management to keep things right and i would say that is one thing that definitely helped limerick that players basically weren't able to go absolutely mental after winning a couple of those all irelands so they stayed indoors a bit more and then maybe we're just hitting the age whereby you're getting a bit more mature so i think that benefited them a little bit and just on that as well, the championships that Limerick won in 20 and 21 are the two that are most similar to the championships Kilkenny won, if you get me, as regards games-wise and longevity. Whereas the championships they won in 18 and the championships they won last year, like they're nearly double the amount of games that Kilkenny played. And so m- maybe it would have been more difficult to do uh, an All-Ireland three in a row had they had to go through the round robin for the three years, but they've still gone through the round robin this year successfully and won Munster as well. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure of that argument. The lack of celebrations or been the inability to celebrate is probably not a bad thing, to be fair as well. <laughs> yeah. 